Hello everybody and welcome to this video. In this video I will be uh, giving you a tour of PHP Designer 7 and all of its very intelligent features and why I think this is the preferred IDE to use when uh, editing uh, any type of whether it's PHP, HTML, or even more uh, advanced languages like C Sharp or Java those kind of languages are great as well. First off, um, just running through of what kind of files you can really use in the in PHP Designer 7 that have a syntax highlighting uh, appended to them. We have PHP, HTML. Um, actually, he's work uh, the developer of the software is currently in the progress of creating uh, a syntax highlighter for HTML5. So currently PHP Designer is updated for HTML4 and XHTML1. And uh, CSS obviously is going to be working on the CSS3 syntax highlighting as some of the properties are not clearly uh, defined in CSS2 so obviously there want to be uh, any of the syntax highlighting just yet for CSS3. Uh, XML, we have um, gray XML1, uh, JavaScript, VBScript, SQL, Perl, Java, C Sharp, Python. I'm not 100% sure if it's Python 2 or Python 3, but I would assume it's up to at least Python 3 since so because that's been out for um, relatively a while. Uh, we also have Ruby and Smarty, and then obviously you can just do a blank file with no syntax highlighting. First, if we start off by creating a PHP document, we can choose right here that it's going to be PHP, XHTML, CSS, JavaScript. So it would also, it's just, it's going to use all four of those syntax highlighters and combine them into one. So then you could easily uh, d derive at what point you're going to be seeing what highlighting and what you're not going to. So if I were going to start off by creating a center tag, which is HTML, which really shouldn't be, and then went ahead and created PHP tags within that center tag, I would be able to have just the PHP tags highlighted. There is an option that you can have it all um, highlighted. It's a smart highlighting feature. And I could do a create a variable here, call it A for Apple. Close that, and then if I want to see the syntax highlighting for HTML, I would just simply click into the HTML, and it would change and make the PHP syntax highlighting more so less noticeable and less visible to the eye, because we're focusing now on our center tags, which is HTML and not PHP. Uh, along with the, the syntax highlighting, there's also... Uh, you can change the syntax highlighting pretty much by, uh, let's see, PHP, we we'll go to Tools, Preferences, and you would be able to go through your syntax highlighters. You would check the one you wanted to use, so we went to PHP. It would show you a preview of what it's going to look like, and you'd be able to go and you'd click the specific highlighting here, so uh, doc style common, I could change the color of that to something darker if I wanted to, and uh, if I did that, it'll change in the code, or in the box below, like that. And you can do that for all types of syntax highlighting within PHP, whether it's variables, conditional statements, an error, message here, a print statement, etc. It's, uh, it's really advanced and it's really helpful when it comes to wanting to personalize your IDE to fit for you. Within the PHP and not in the syntax highlighting, we also have our code explorer here all the way on the right. And this makes things a lot easier when wanting to use PHP. So if I want to select A, like say if I had a function, say I had a big file with a lot of functions in it. Let's do that. Let's open up a file with some functions in it. And I'll make things a little easier. So 
So here I have a file with a bunch of functions. And you can see over here we have our functions on the right in a nice list, variables as well. And simply if I wanted to go to that function, I would just have to click it and it would highlight it for me. You could do it there, and then I could even go down here and look at the variables within the functions and how they uh, are used and where they are defined. It's, uh, it's pretty helpful when it comes to a very large file with a bunch of functions or variables or classes or pretty much anything. A dependency would be an include file, of course, and then so forth and so forth. It's really helpful and it makes things a lot easier for the person trying to figure out where something is in the program. There's a lot more with PHP. Uh, I'm just going to go down a list here. There's a code explorer I just explained. There's code completion um, that also has uh, code completion for object-oriented programming within PHP, which is great as well. Um, the Code Explorer will go to any declarated uh, function, variable, dependency, class, etc. Um, there's even more. There's PHP Documenter Wizards, it would, which would create a full documentation of your code within seconds. Um, I haven't personally touched upon that, so I'm not going to preview it, but from what I hear, it's really, really awesome. We have PHP Document here. And if I just go through the wizard, I would just, it's simple, it's there, and it would make things a lot easier for a user to understand. Also, when uh, with PHP, say we have an error, so if I forgot to end this and like, want to echo hello, like that, there would be an error within that. If you give it a second, it's going to tell you it's... There's an error. Uh, usually, there we go. It shows us where the error is being called upon. It's unexpected to string, which means a string is continued, yet we're trying to um, do something else. So if I fix that, add that double quote there, it'll fix the error. Uh, the debugging within PHP pretty much does everything that needs to be debugged in PHP here. It also has syntax, syntax checking for um, PHP, HTML, XHTML, and CSS. Um, and even with uh, the syntax, it uses uh, PHP.net, and uh, that actually is 100% accurate. So it's relying on a third party, but you're also getting the 100% accuracy that is really helpful when you're going to be programming a large program or even just a short one. Um, within HTML, we're going to slide off of the PHP now. We're just going to go into the, the developer environment here, which can be anywhere from a PHP developer to uh, a front-end HTML applicator. Uh, we also have, we have the code completion for PHP. I didn't show you that one. But say I were like going to start an array, it's going to open and close the parentheses in there and then uh, if I do a single quote it'll open and close the single quote and put my cursor in between them so I can just start typing blah and I can do that with double quotes and also if I wanted to add to that array I would just have to hit the left bracket and it would open and close and put my cursor between it and it also would work with color braces uh, as for the HTML code completion, we are looking at a lot. So if I started typing the A tag and I put a link inside of it, I could do HTTP MP software .dk, which is where you can find PHP Designer. When you close your tag, it's going to immediately add the closing tag for the beginning tag and put your cursor between it so then you could link your URL with text. There's a lot more with that. You would just have to play around and figure out what's best for you. Um, there's also, you could use input type and hit equals. And we have a nice drop down of what kind of uh, possible 
input types we could use. We have a, a text which is just we type text in, password, it'll uh, conceal your password, checkbox, radio, etc. Uh, that, that's a really helpful one when you're uh, strapped for time. Uh, sometimes it can get, say, a bit confusing, but otherwise it is really, really helpful and it makes things a lot more easier when it comes to using HTML, PHP, CSS, etc. Uh, as for an HTML document, when you create a new one, it's going to set up a new HTML document with a template of your choice. And even in this template, you can you can see that the doc type is there. We have the XML and S, and we have even some starter meta tags here. The title of our document, everything is within the head tags there, and then it will place the cursor between the body tags. That is also really helpful, especially if you don't know the correct syntax for creating a doc type. But sooner or later, when we're dealing with HTML5, it's going to be a lot simpler, and you won't have to deal with this mess of code in the end here. Next, we can go ahead and uh, try out a CSS file. The Code Explorer works with uh, the CSS as well, as long as JavaScript. Uh, I'm not going to show you the JavaScript because once I show you the CSS, you pretty much already get the idea of it as well as you already got the idea with the PHP. So if I wanted to style the body, I would do this. Whoops, sorry. Images that blot up PNG color, and then it also has the nice tooltips down here where you can choose colors. You have a URL, you can center it, you could do center and then top, something like that. And say you were making, you had a very big file with all these CSS classes and IDs, and you weren't sure exactly where they were, and you don't want to go through everything. So the Code Explorer here on the right does the same thing like it would with the PHP Code Explorer. And all you have to do is click what class you want to go to or what ID you wanted to go to. And it would just drop your cursor onto that line of the file where it was defined and highlight it. Uh, same with the JavaScript pretty much. Um, we also have a uh, oops, where's projects. Uh, to create a project, you just click this button, hit new, project title, name it something, PHP forum, um, files for PHP forum. We go next, project root folder. That's I'm going to select that. Mm -hmm. School examples. We'll select the forum. There we go. no need you could set up an FTP account that would be great and there you are you have it done you go ahead and click OK Oops. you would have to open the project first and there you have it your files are easily there to be viewed shows you the size the type and the date it was last edited um, all you have to do is double click the file and it will open right up and Folders within folders, great, easy to navigate. It's great. There are um, most IDEs, um, whether you're actually developing or not, they have a limited undo and redo, but um, PHP Designer 7 has unlimited. The max I've seen in some other similar IDs is the max is about uh, 1,024. Um, it's really great but usually you're not gonna have to undo that many times. It's a great feature to have though. It's really great. There's a lot more to this program than most would see straight from the eye but what this program really does it's making you feel like you're using a very simple program but at the same time making you feel like an advanced user. There are so many options here and really it's great. Um, another thing I want to show you is the HTML file. If you do not want to use the XHTML 1.0 transitional, 
can easily just go to HTML and change the doc type to the, something like that. It'll update the doc type for you. Actually, it'll just add it in. So you just have to delete that line, HTML, doc type, and select 4.0, whatever. Something like that. It's great. It's built in. You don't have to worry about knowing this long, lengthy piece of code that sooner in time is going to be useless to most developers. Um, I'm just going to show you some other syntax, Python. Uh, this one, it just depends on how you use Python. Clearly, this is a Python document, so say we wanted to import, or actually it's from turtle import star, and then let's define a function called uh, draw, oops, And there's so much you can do. Make the turtle go forward. It's good. So you can see the values in blue. Call draw. And say bye. Um, I actually I changed the settings on the Python uh, syntax for me. But... I don't use this for Python since this is a PHP editor. I'm going to solely use this for PHP, HTML, CSS, web development, practically. Um, overall, you can see this program has a very nice GUI. It is great for a starter user and for an advanced user. And another great thing about the PHP here is you could run your document without having to go into your local host and having it run itself. This has the PHP built in, so we can do A equals 1 and then 4 statement. And then we can just do echo A times I and just put a break. Close it and run the script. Just by clicking run. It's going to go down this list, down this list, blah, blah, blah. And um, with this run, you can also run it in Firefox, Inner Explorer. If you have the options to, you can choose uh, Chrome or Opera Safari. You just have to make sure you have those installed before you go ahead and try running it. Um, I would seriously recommend this program over any other program that I have ever used to develop on and to do anything. I have used this video, I uh, use this program in many of my tutorials. There's over 200,000 views with this program within it. Uh, it's a great program and I really suggest that you go ahead at least try the 21 uh, day free trial and if you like it after that I really recommend you buy the license whether commercial student or corporate and then you would have full access to this magnificent program created by a great person in Denmark. What else can you ask for? This is possibly the greatest IDE that is perfect for a PC user. There's just, there's just a lot. You can head over to their website at mpsoftware.dk or .com or .eu. Check it out. You can uh, view more in-depth features with screenshots of other things that I did not cover with this video. But overall, this is one of the best programs I've ever used and ever will use. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.